we want to simplify the given complex fraction. And we'll discuss how to simplify the complex fraction using two methods. Let's begin by simplifying using method two. The first step in method two is to find the least common denominator of the fractions in the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction. So beginning with the given complex fraction, we want to determine the least common denominator of all the fractions on the top and on the bottom. So if we're looking for the least common denominator, notice how we'd have to have a factor of three, a factor of five, and a factor of p, which means 15p is the least common denominator of all the fractions, meaning we can write all the fractions as equivalent fractions with a denominator of 15p. Now that we know the least common denominator, notice step two is to multiply the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction by the LCD. So now we're going to multiply the top and the bottom of the complex fraction by 15p. So on the top, we'd have one over p times 15p plus 10 thirds times 15p. On the bottom, we'd have one over p times 15p plus four-fifths times 15p. Now we'll find the products, and we can write 15p as a fraction with the denominator of one. Looking at this product here, notice how there's a common factor of p between the numerator and denominator. p over p simplifies to one, so this first product is just 15. Here we have a common factor of three. There's one three and three, and five threes and 15. So we have 10 times five times p, which is 50p. So we have plus 50p. In the bottom, this product simplifies. p over p simplifies to one. So we have 15 plus, five and 15 share a common factor of five. There's one five and five, and three fives and 15. So here we have four times three times p, which gives us 12p. We need to be careful with the rational expression in this form. We cannot simplify here because we cannot simplify across addition or subtraction. So to check to see if this will simplify, we should factor the top and factor the bottom and see if there's any common factors other than one. So the greatest common factor in the numerator is five. If we factor out five, we're left with the quantity three plus 10p. The greatest common factor at the bottom would be three. If we factor out three, we're left with five plus four p. So there are no common factors other than one between the numerator and denominator, and therefore either expression would be correct for the simplified form of the given complex fraction. So this is method two. Now let's go back to the original complex fraction and simplify using method one. The first step in method one is to simplify the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction separately, and then write the complex fraction as a division problem. So looking at just the numerator, notice how the least common denominator would be 3p. So we'll multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by 3, and the top and bottom of this fraction by p. Looking at just the bottom now, notice how the least common denominator would be 5p. So we'll multiply the top and bottom by 5, for the first fraction, and multiply the top and bottom of the second fraction by p. So now on the top, we have three over three p plus 10 p over three p. On the bottom, we have five over five p plus four p over five p. Now we can go ahead and add on the top, the common denominator is 3p. Adding the numerators, we get 3 plus 10p. Because 3 plus 10p does not factor, let's go ahead and put that in parentheses. Now looking at the bottom, the common denominator is 5p. Adding the numerators, we get 5 plus 4p. Again, 5 plus 4p does not factor. Let's go ahead and put that in parentheses. Now that we've simplified the numerator and denominator, step two is to write as a division problem. So because this fraction bar means division, we can write this as the top fraction 
divided by the bottom fraction. And then we have divided by the bottom fraction. And now we'll write this quotient as a product. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So as a product, the first fraction stays the same. And then we'll multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction, so times 5p over the quantity 5 plus 4p. Before multiplying, though, notice how we have a common factor of p between the numerator and denominator. p over p simplifies to 1. So now multiplying, we have the quantity 3 plus 10p times 5, or 5, times the quantity 3 plus 10p. In the denominator, we have 3 times the quantity 5 plus 4p. Notice by using method 1, the rational expression is in factored form. Of course, we can also give the simplified expression after distributing. If we distribute, we have 15 plus 50p in the numerator, and the denominator would be 15 plus 12p. Again, either rational expression is a simplified expression for the given complex fraction. I hope you found this helpful.